All want to say hello? No? Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> I wanted you all to see these shoes that Ohad has on his feet. I didn't cut my toenails. Wow. Turn to the side. Yes. Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, the 1st of August. Welcome to a new vlog. This morning, I uh, finished editing last week's vlog and set it to upload. It'll upload tonight, Sunday, like at 4.30 in the afternoon. So that's what I've been busy with. Having breakfast, some toast, some coffee, getting ready to head to one of the beaches on the east side of the island. It's about a little under an hour drive. We've got some beaches close to us here, but they're really small, which is beautiful. But if you're going in the busy hours of the day, it's probably just gonna be really crowded. So we're gonna head to a beach that's a little bit bigger since we didn't get a very early start. So obviously I'm taking you with me and Oh, I thought maybe that Ohad and I could show you some of our vacation clothes. We've acquired some new um, travel pieces to our wardrobe, so maybe we'll do that later together. I have my vintage um, earrings on. This necklace is from Agape Studio. Uh, it's a French jewelry brand that I talked about in a video before. And a linen um, shirt from And Other Stories. And linen shorts from, also from And Other Stories. And actually shoes from And Other Stories. <laughs> Beauty babes. We switched Airbnbs. We're now on the north of the island. This Airbnb is gorgeous. Um, the woman that owns it lives on the other side of it, I think, 
or it's like a three level house and she lives on the bottom and then she rents the top two. I'm just having a gin tonic. My mom makes the best gin tonics ever. I just wanted to catch you before the light goes away. Also, I really need to just show you what is in front of my eyes. So I just took a shower. Um, okay, so like I mentioned before, let me sit down. Like I mentioned before, we moved Airbnbs to the north of the island. The island has like, it goes like all the way up in the very tip. So we're not at the tip tip of the island, but we're sort of um, like north of the middle chunk and before it goes up. So we arrived, we were super hungry. We stopped by the kind of capital of the island on the way here. And it was so hot, it was really unbearable. There's a heat wave here. Obviously, this is like the complaints of most privileged situation. But it was so hot that we just couldn't bear to like be in this capital. I bought like a little wrap skirt thing for like the beach. I would also like to say, you know, I'm not staying in some five-star hotel. First of all, we don't have money for that. And second of all, I don't get gifted things like that. You know, I'm not some kind of travel influencer. Um, but sometimes in these amazing places, you know, you can get a reasonable Airbnb and it will look like this, you know, it's just gorgeous. The sun has set already, it's just still that really magical hour where everything looks kind of misty and it almost feels like you're suspended in the air. I mean, we are like on a mountain, so I do feel like I'm suspended in the air, but it, when I look out, the sky and the sea are just meeting each other. There's no line, so it just feels like we're floating in, you know, some kind of liminal, gorgeous space. So I was reading more at the beach. Let's see where I am. We're in the course of these girls' development in middle school and at the end of middle school with exams and also one of the characters just got her period for the first time. So she's in this kind of stage of her development as a teenager in her womanhood and she's kind of dealing with that. Someone commented on my video. Let me see if I can find. There's a YouTube account here called The Prime of Life. Hi, and she wrote me a really sweet comment on last week's vlog and she said, I love Elena Fronte. I just started reading the uh, Neapolitan books this month and I'm reading the third now. I don't know why, but I just adore Elena and Leela and the way she constructs the feeling of the town. And I really agree, like she, creates such a world inside this neighborhood in Naples with all of the different characters, the people that work in the school, the vegetable and fruit seller and their kids and the shoemaker and their kids, all of the different kind of um, families and how they're related and wealth, lack of wealth. I think it's really sweet that th both of these characters, uh, Elena and uh, Lila at one point, they decide that Little Women is their favorite book and this is how they're gonna get out of being poor. They're gonna grow up and write a novel and it's gonna make them rich, <laughs> which I just love that. I'm also picking it up, I'm dipping in and out of it. I'm, I'm not really sitting for long sessions of reading, which I actually find reading on vacation kind of difficult, although I wish that I wouldn't find it difficult because it's the perfect time to be reading, but <clears throat> it's really hard for me and I, I think maybe later in this vlog, later in the week, I will like maybe sit down and talk about that. Something that's interesting that I feel when I read it is I just feel like it's sort of a blur. It's kind of like we are going through their days, their years even of development. Things sometimes move slowly or skip time and move a bit faster. There, I, I get this kind of feeling like the story is washing over me, which it is sort of being retold by one of the girls, Elena, as an adult. And she's like, I'm gonna write down our story. And I mean, I guess that's kind of when you reflect on your life maybe it feels sort of like a wash sometimes, like 
it's you're just flowing through time as you're reflecting on your adolescence and stuff so this is sort of the feeling that I get when I read it but I am enjoying I'm enjoying the Italian imagery I'm enjoying being in this Naples neighborhood with all of these really interesting eclectic um, characters and it's very much a coming-of-age story um, which I don't read a lot of actually so that's also nice. So I bid you farewell for now. What are we making here, Mama? We are making feta stuffed roasted red sweet peppers. Which we had in Which Milos had Island in, in Greece. Milos, yep. A different island than where we are now, but we're kind of doing a recreation. A re we're doing our best. They're brilliant at it, but ours are pretty darn good. <laughs> We've got some red onion on the side, some garlic, whole garlic cloves. Zucchini. We had a zucchini left over. It's kind of whatever we had left in the kitchen. We're just throwing on this roasting pan so it can all become heaven in our mouths. Oh, you should later. have a cooking show. <laughs> we are making Israeli food. Israeli food to go as a topping. Yes. Making some lovely, <sighs> not chunky, trina. Or, how do you call it if you don't have this accent? Tahini. Tahini. Thick. She needs more lemon. And lemon? And oil? No, do you no, put olive no, oil? no. No oil. Water, lemon, garlic, salt. Tahini. Perfection. Tahini. Mm. <laughs> um, we're gonna have dinner soon. I'm wearing a new dress that I bought show you now, but I was reminded that we have two goats living in front of us where we parked the car. I don't know if they're still there, but it's like a mama or papa goat and a little baby goat and this, they just hang out there. Like compared to the um, uh, southern part of the island, this part is a little bit less inhabited. That's the feeling that I get. Very beautiful. And we are in nature, baby. Oh, the dress is from End Other Stories. Everything I'm wearing right now is from End Other Stories because I lost my shit in there. And my money. morning phone just died so um, I'm gonna guess that it's Thursday just waking up and having some yogurt with a cut peach inside we're sitting out on our little terrace in front of the bedroom today's plan is like every other day which is to go to a beach there's so many beaches to choose from in this area on this island so you can kind of hit a different one every day and you will still not go to all of them that exist. There was one that we were planning on going yesterday but um, I guess on a windy day it's not the best to go to so yesterday the woman that owns this house she told us maybe not today um, so we're gonna try it today Oh, 
Fragen? Hi, it's, uh, what day is it? It's Sunday morning, it's about 11. I want to edit this vlog so that it can be up. Well, let's see, because obviously I'm here on vacation and I want to be exploring the island and not sitting in my, you know, room uh, editing. So let's see, like, if I can actually do it by tomorrow, but normally I want to upload on Sunday. I wanted to just update you because I have kind of switched gears in my reading. So as much as I'm loving Ferrante and I'm loving um, diving into that first book, My Brilliant Friend of the Neapolitan Quartet, just something about it is not calling me right now. Like I start reading it and then I'm like, Ugh. I just have to put it down. Not because I don't like it, it's just, yeah, sometimes your mood just changes and mid-book, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with the book. I mean, it could have to do with the book, but um, it could just be that I'm wanting to read something else. Although, two days ago we were sitting in a cafe by the sea, um, and there was this family behind us that was speaking like half French, half Italian, and there was a young girl there, and my dad said, because he's watched the first episode of the TV series of My Brilliant Friend, and he said, like, she looks exactly like one of the girls in that series. And I looked at her, and she exactly represented what I imagined this girl looks like in the book, um, specifically Leela's character. So I just couldn't take my eyes off of this girl for the next like 10 minutes because she really looked and breathed and like just acted like this character from Ferrante's novel so that was really interesting how books can somehow uh, like find their way into real life. I, I took um, a little break from that and I just decided to pick up an arc, a digital arc that I have from Lolly Editions, the um, publisher in London. I, I took um, a little break from that and I just decided to pick up an arc, a digital arc that I have from Lolly Editions, the um, publisher in London. They sent this to me a while ago. It's called After the Sun by Jonas Eika or Eika, translated by Sherilyn Nicolette Helberg. It's translated from the original, which is Danish. And it's a short story, I guess, collection, which I didn't really know what it was going to be until I started reading it, but I, it is short stories because um, I don't think any of the stories connect unless they do miraculously in the end. Short one, I think it's under 200 pages, and it comes out at the end of August, so I wanted to read it anyway before it came out, and I just opened it to kind of like taste something else to see if it was more my reading mood and whoa so first of all this book is crazy 
<laughs> it's like doing a lot of things. It's um, very, very surreal, very fever dream vibe. So you sort of have no idea what's real, what's not real. Um, and also reality is looked at from a different perspective. So things don't need to make sense. The worlds that he's building in these stories are not ruled by the rules of reality as we know it. So the first story is called Alvin, um, and it's about this man who is on a business trip to Copenhagen. He's originally from Copenhagen, but he's been living abroad in Spain. So he comes back to um, Copenhagen and he finds this bank that he works for completely ruined, like it's in ruins and in rubble. And then he meets this guy named Alvin in a bar or a coffee shop or something. Anyway, they develop this like strange friendship and he crashes in his house and this Alvin guy is sort of like not selling stocks, something of that nature. So they bond over this like digital selling of um, future buys. I mean, I'm obviously not um, <laughs> knowledgeable in like anything that has to do with that world, but it was really fascinating how he built this story. There's also something, a through line through this collection of gay erotic vibes, which I don't mind. There's a heat wave anyway, so we're feeling it. And yeah, very, very surreal, weird. Like, the whole collection reminds me of, like, w when you're in and out of falling asleep, and you, like, you take a nap, and then you kind of wake up, and then you fall asleep again, you wake up, and you fall asleep, and everything blurs, like, what you're dreaming, what's real, where are you, when you fell asleep, when you are awake. So this is, like, the sense that I get. Yeah, so I really enjoyed the first story. Very strange. Hard to describe these uh, stories, so I feel like I'm already gonna not do a very good job with that. I read a partial interview with the author about the first story, Alvin, which I'm, I think you can find online, so I'm gonna, the whole story, so I'm gonna try to put that downstairs. He's talking about the fact that this like world of finance um, will find a way to stay alive even in disaster because that's how our world functions is through money there's this disaster in this office of finance in this finance building and still he can like crawl down a hole through these like rooms that have been completely destroyed and the workers are like sitting in there with their you know headphones on with their laptops they're doing their work so it's like no matter what the the world has to continue with this like finance or like we're so obsessed with um, money and finance and that's like how we run society. The next story is called Bad Mexican Dog which starts with um, a young a, like teenager or maybe like young 20s early 20s guy who is uh, applying for a job to work in a beach club which is funny because I'm like laying on the beach almost every day, sometimes at a beach club with like um, a bed and an umbrella that you rent. And so he's basically applying for a job for one of those. So it was very fitting that I was reading this now. Very weird story about this these group of young men that work as like in this the beach boys in this beach club. And there's like one of their friends gets kind of, one of their friends gets killed and then they have this weird ritual to like bring him back to life it also has to do with how people perceive you racially and make assumptions based on how you look because they're dealing with these customers that pay them to like fan them get them water put suntan lotion on them and they have this feeling that they need to become an empty vessel in front of this customer and whatever the customer thinks about them, they need to play that part. They need to reflect it back to them. But yeah, they do this very weird, like, ritual, super erotic, very, one of the weirdest things I've read. Then the third story is called Rachel Nevada, which I really enjoyed because I'm from Nevada. 
So I know the Nevada desert landscape really well. It makes me very nostalgic to read kind of from that perspective or in that setting. Rachel Nevada is about this couple and they live in Rachel Nevada, which is this very, very, very small place and actually not sure if it's fictional or not. I need to Google that, but it's kind of near Area 51 where there's sort of all of the UFO alien research. You've got a government agency working there and everything. So um, this story is about this guy and his wife who have lost their kid. So they're grieving. This story is about grief. He deals with it by encountering this sort of alien object in the desert. And there's this image of like all of the animals and plants like hugging and like nuzzling and cuddling this like weird metal object and he kind of wants to become this object. So this story is also very strange, very weird. Wasn't sure what was happening a lot of the time, but I liked it. And very sci-fi UFO, which is something that I also wouldn't normally think I would enjoy, but it was working really well and it was done in a really beautiful, poignant way, it was like, a UFO angle on grief, like wanting to leave the world, wanting to become an empty vessel for something to take you. Also, sort of another version of a religion, like something to believe in, something as a small town to kind of revolve around. Very strange, but I really enjoyed it. Now I'm in the fourth story, um, which is me, Rory, and Aurora which I'm feeling is revolving around drugs, drug abuse. Um, it's like this strange thruple situation. Guys, this book is crazy and weird, but I'm really loving it because I, I want something actually super not like real life. There was something about Ferrante, like she's talking about the nitty gritty of everyday life and how it functions and what it means to be a person in the world through her characters, and which I'm all for, love it. But I think right now I just wanted something like kind of fever dreamy, crazy, whimsical, weird. So I'm finding that in this story collection. So that comes out in August. I'll let you know what I think about it when I finish it. The last story is titled the same as the second story. So I don't know if it's a continuation or something. It's definitely one of the weirder things I've ever read, but I'm, I really like that kind of thing. If I finish it by tomorrow, then maybe I'll pop on before I finish the vlog and give you my thoughts. Today we're driving to the north. We're gonna check out some beaches up there. And there's a Thai restaurant. <laughs> Just funny to be eating Thai food in Greece, but we've eat, eaten a lot of Greek food. And where my parents live, they cannot find great Thai food. So my dad is like, please, can we go to this Thai restaurant? So we're gonna do that and yeah. See how the day goes. Okay, two things, because I'm just wondering, I don't know, things to film, so this is what I'm gonna do. I found this bag yesterday when we were in this, or not yesterday, the day before yesterday. We're in a really, really, really cute, magical little village, and we met someone who said it was their favorite part of the island, uh, a local that said it was just the most magical place of the island. So we went, it was amazing. And there was um, a shop of like, I guess things that are made in Greece, handmade in Greece. So I saw this woven bag. It's got like some straw elements, like a perfect beach bag that I'm hoping will also be useful even when it's not, when I'm not at the beach. Do you hear all the wildlife here? Yes. And then we just went to the pharmacy. I needed to buy new sunscreen. And I also bought this. I like to buy products that are made in the place that I am. I could probably get this abroad, but it was nice to just support a Greek brand. So this is called Youth Lab, which I think I've seen before on a previous holiday to Greece. Well, I'm like hunched over to talk to you. I've been looking for a vitamin C serum for a while to add into my, um, daily uh, skincare routine. Vitamin C is a great antioxidant, 
protects your skin from the environment. And at a certain percentage of vitamin C can help with brightening, dark spots, uneven skin tone, those things that everyone wants. <laughs> so I'll use that for the first time and I really like it so far. The serum is very watery, uh, very lightweight. And this is 15% stable L-ascorbic acid. If you're looking for a good vitamin C, look for that L-ascorbic acid. That's the ingredient you want to see. Anyway, so that's the other thing that I got that is exciting. You only have August off. So you'll probably go to the States at the beginning of the vacation. I think it'll be a pretty busy in the summer next year. Hello. I have not talked to the camera or filmed anything. I don't even in know how long. We flew back to Rome and then our friend Mai came from Tel Aviv to visit us and she was with us. Um, actually extended her stay a bit longer than she was supposed to. So just things kind of started, you know, like rolling and then I just stopped filming and I always took my camera with me on our like daily you know adventures or whatever and I just never opened it I was just spending time with you know family my partner my so we're like I just didn't pull out the camera we fly back home on Friday so that's it that was the end of our one month in Europe um, vacation. I just feel like it went like that even though we've done a lot of things. Um, but on the way back, we have to quarantine, like isolate for seven days um, at home. <laughs> I feel like if I start a vlog, a new vlog, then I will want to start it when we arrive home. Sort of like one week in isolation vlog because I feel like I will probably read during that time because I will have not a lot of things to do. So I wanted to at least finish this vlog, except it's been spread over way more than a week because most of this vlog is like in Greece and then it's like, hi, I'm coming to you from like three weeks in the future. Anyways, so let's talk a few bookish related things and then we close the vlog. So I finished um, The Little Virtues by Natalia Ginsburg. Natalia Ginsburg is an Italian author, essayist. Um, she's also written plays and short stories. Um, and she was born in Palermo in Sicily in 1916. She's one of the biggest voices in Italian literature and I've heard her name and seen her name a few times, but as I was coming to Italy, I thought that it would be a good chance to read some Italian authors, one being Elena Ferrante and the other one being Natalia Ginsberg. Also, the introduction to this book is by Rachel Cusk, and it's the same piece that is the final essay of Coventry by Cusk, which you know that I read. So it was a perfect kind of tie-in to starting this one. So this is a collection of essays, 
and first of all, I really loved it. I love Ginsburg. I like her voice. I like... She's pretty straight to the point. In the introduction by Rachel Cusk, the first thing that she says is, the voice of the Italian novelist and essayist Natalia Ginsburg comes to us with absolute clarity amid the veils of time and language, which I think is a perfect way to describe it. It's very... it has a, a deep clarity, not only in the word choice, but also in how um, accurate I feel like she describes life and what it means to be a human being, at least from her perspective. With all essay collections, I feel like you find ones that you gravitate to more than others, and I definitely have the same experience with this, although I would say as an overall collection, it was one of the um, more successful essay collections I've ever read. A lot of these pieces are written from the Italian countryside, uh, where she and her husband lived in exile under fascist rule, and then also pieces that she wrote um, in 1960s London. Ginsburg rests her gaze on the human intimacies that shape and define our lives, friendships, marriage, and parenthood. She describes her longest relationship with her writing in a definitive piece on vocation and motherhood, while her groundbreaking essay on raising children remains as vital as the day it was written. So there's a lot of themes that she's discussing here about art, family, marriage, what home means and belonging. So the first few essays are really, really strong. I think like the first four essays, I was either um, in tears or on the verge of tears. Um, at first I thought, wow, it's depressing, <laughs> but not in a way that I didn't like. It was really, really beautiful, but really sad and very, very moving. Um, so I was kind of really, surprised by that because um, some of the essays are fairly short but they pack a, an emotional punch and then there's a section of the middle of the book where she's kind of like ranting that would be the way that I would explain it like ranting about England and her time living in London and just the British way of life and food and the British um, mentality social mentality social culture she's kind of not happy with it <laughs> in in relationship to growing up as an Italian person living in Italy. So uh, there's a, a clash of cultures there and she's describing that in the middle section of the book. Yeah, so she also like doesn't hold anything back in those essays, which um, made me kind of laugh. And I did sort of feel like it could move on, like I didn't need to really read those for so long, but um, they I still found them interesting. And then in the latter half, like the last third of the book, I would say, she talks a lot about her vocation of being an author and being a writer, specifically the essay, My Vocation. Um, as you know, I love, love to read artists talking about writing, talking about the craft, their vocation. So this was really, really good. I dog-eared like 12 pages of probably a 15 page essay. Okay, I'm gonna read you a page. So her vocation is writing, but what I like about artists talking about their work or or their what they think about the craft is that it definitely applies to writing, but it applies also to anyone with any kind of vocation or any kind of art um, work. So as a creator like of dance, <laughs> a creator of dance, a choreographer, a dancer, a performer, um, someone who creates things, uh, it, I feel that it very much could relate to me. So she says, the important thing is to be convinced that this really is your vocation, your profession, something you will do all your life. But as a vocation, it is no joke. There are, there are innumerable dangers besides those I have mentioned. We are constantly threatened with grave dangers whenever we write a page or do whatever you do. There is a danger of suddenly starting to be flirtatious and of singing. I always have a crazy desire to sing and I have to be very careful that I don't. And there is a danger of cheating with words that do not really exist within us, that we have picked up by chance from outside of ourselves and which we skillfully slip in because we have become a bit dishonest. That's very interesting. There is the danger of cheating and being dishonest. 
As you see, it is quite a difficult vocation, but it is the finest one in the world. The days and houses of our life, the days and the houses of the people with whom we are involved, books and images and thoughts and conversations, all these things feed it and it grows within us. It is a vocation which also feeds on terrible things. It swallows the best and the worst in our lives and our evil feelings flow in its blood just as much as our benevolent feelings. It feeds itself and grows within us. That gives me goosebumps. Um, yeah, I love the way she talks about the depth of knowing your vocation, which kind of feels like a calling. She kind of refers to it as something that you can't choose to turn off and turn on. And if, for example, you're dealing with something really like grief, you, she says it's really, really hard or impossible to use your craft as a way to deal with your grief. I mean, of course, you do do that, but you're, it's almost as if your craft decides when you need to make it and it calls you and you just must abide by it. And the last essay is called The Little Virtues, which is about education of children, um, looking at the little virtues versus the big virtues. Little virtues would be thrift, um, instead of a big virtue of generosity and an indifference to money. And that a little virtue would be success, and the big virtue would be the desire to be and to know things. So she's talking about how we're um, drawn a lot of the times to raise our children with the emphasis on the little virtues, like trust, truth, success, um, and what are the bigger virtues that are actually what those things are. Interesting points for parental departure. <laughs> yeah, in reading that, obviously, because I'm not a parent, but plant seeds um, for a different way of thinking. This was a great collection, very successful. <laughs> There's a little virtue, success. It really um, opened me to many things, and I just think that she's a great writer, and she's a very distinct voice, and distinct opinion. You feel her opinion through and through, which I can really appreciate. It's not something that lays on the top that feels um, neutral. It's not neutral. She has a voice here. By the time you see me next, or probably by the time you see this, unless I edit it and upload it here, I might already be at home in isolation. So that's what I'm doing, if you're wondering. So, you know, send me Instagram messages, leave me comments, because I will have hours and hours in the day to chat with you. So anyway, catch you later. Bye.